In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Amen. Indeed, we gather uh, this 18th Sunday of the year. We, we gather around this table of God's plenty. We, we gather to celebrate the feast that gathers heaven and earth together. And so we come grateful for these gifts. We come expectant that we will be filled and then encouraged to be a source of God's generosity for our sisters and brothers. So in that truth, we turn to Jesus through, through God and we cry out, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May our loving God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O God, and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness. That for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you, who, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages, for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The refrain for our responsorial psalm is, I will praise your name, my King and my God.
When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Turkey, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
And so we hear in this portion of Matthew's Gospel, there's a, a, a turn, uh, what had been a, a kind of successful ministry, now is gathering to itself some difficulty. Jesus has heard about the martyrdom of John the Baptist, and he decides to find some shelter in solitude and to commune with his father in a, in a quiet place, as the gospel says, in a lonely place, in a desert place, so that he can be Im, Im, immen, immersed in a communion with his creator, his God, his father. What I read in that is good news, at least as I see it. Jesus is not committed to a kind of martyrdom complex. He knows his life is a gift, and he's to use that life as a contribution to the lives of the women and men around him, so he's not rushing after martyrdom. That will find him ultimately, but not because he wishes it on himself. It will come because of the complexities and the machinations of political and religious leaders in Jerusalem. So for the time being, he finds himself in, in a desert place, in a lonely place. But it's hardly lonely, according to Matthew. There's a great crowd of people who followed him, who, know, who knew where he was going and met him there. So what we see, I think, in, in the picture of this story is this gathering of humankind. The Gospel says 5,000 men, not to mention women and children. You, 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 can, you can bet that most of these men, if not all of them, are married, so counting 5,000 women. So we've got 10,000 there. And if you figure just, you know, kind of conservatively, three children to a family, you've got 15,000 kids plus 10,000 adults, which means 25,000 people around Jesus, which according to historians is about a quarter of the population of Galilee at the time. This is a vast, immense crowd of human need. And they're looking, they're, they're aching for something, for something they suspect Jesus can give them. The Gospel tells us ultimately that what they want is to be found because they, they experience being lost. They want to be found and bound together as a people in God's generosity that is materialized in the outreach of Jesus to these people. And as usual, the disciples don't get it. They, uh, at the end of the day, and it's late, and these people are around Jesus, and they're hungry, and their stomachs are probably growling, the disciples decide the best thing to do is get rid of this crowd. Let them go off and take care of themselves. Let them feed, find food for themselves and their families. Why should we be burdened with this? After all, we only have uh, uh, five loaves and two fish. Uh, to take care of ourselves. That's about ourselves. That's about our need. But I think you probably already know five and two equals seven. And in the tradition, seven is, a, is a, an important number. Seven indicates the generosity of God in the ancient history of Israel. And so the story now begins to take on the aura of a promise of God's generosity. Jesus looking at the loaves and the fishes that the disciples have brought for themselves, takes them and he proclaims a blessing over them, which means in the story he is identifying these loaves and the fish as gifts from God, not just uh, an attempt to surfeit uh, hunger, this is about God's outreach to the needy, broken, searching human heart. Jesus' prayer is a prayer of gratitude because what he sees in this crowd are the broken bodies of people and their histories, 
the hungry uh, souls of these women and men and children, and he is seeing them with the eyes of God. He is seeing them with the eyes of his heart. What the gospel proclaims in so many words is that what they receive as gift from God, they are to give away. That's not news to us. That's bedrock gospel truth. The gifts that are given in God's generosity to us are meant to be given away as gift to others. So, you know, this event that begins with, a, you know, two fish and five loaves uh, turns into something magnanimous and deeply gracious. We have a, a piece of this uh, in, the, the, in Matthew's Gospel at a different place in the, uh, in the Beatitudes, uh, in chapter 5 of Matthew, which is seen as, for us, the, the articulation of a new living Torah. And in that proclamation, we find these words, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So, the program, according to Jesus in the Gospel, is that God's graciousness and generosity comes on the wings of this sense of, of uh, righteousness, looking to see the promise of uh, gifts in their fullness. Uh, uh, how shall I put this? Contra contramanding the, the curse of hunger and thirst in the human heart. And so it's righteousness that this crowd has to learn. It's righteousness that they see exemplified in Jesus in what he says and does. So the example, it seems to me, that we are struck with yet again is that we should know what we have. We should be honest with the gifts that come to us. And we should be thankful to God because ultimately all the gifts come from God. And the challenge to give those gifts away as gifts for others. That's what brings us here uh, for the celebration of the liturgy. The gift of word that is proclaimed here is a truth that we hear and reverence in our hearts and are meant to give it away. We are meant to be living truths of the gospel proclamation. And we're meant to see our lives ultimately as bread broken for the needs and the hungers of our sisters and brothers around us. There's a story that's told about a disciple, a believer, who witnessed Jesus in, in this uh, event, uh, this gracious, generous event over bread and fish. But he was somewhat disturbed by it all. And he confessed later on that he could not follow Jesus any longer because this is the one who could have fed the human heart, and he only did it once. So what would be the reason to follow him? I might suggest to you, in that sense of the story, this disciple missed the point. It was this disciple who was meant to be bread for the hungry hearts of sisters and brothers. And that's the lesson for us today. We are meant to be a source of life for sisters and brothers, especially in this time when there are so many people out of work, when so many of us are anxious about catching a disease, uh, when the country is turned inside out by the continuation of racial injustice. You and I are meant to be a bread that satisfies the human heart, a truth 
that lays claim to God's witness in all of this that confronts us today. So indeed, sisters and brothers, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for indeed you will be filled. And so, sisters and brothers, taking these words of Scripture from the ancient prophet and from uh, the, the, the Apostle Matthew, let us proclaim our faith in these words and our trust in God. Let's use the text of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion, the communion of saints, saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. For whom shall we now pray? Our response today will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may receive the nourishment for life that God gives us in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of peace, that God will bring forth a new time of peace so that all can live in safety in families, neighborhoods, and cities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of cities and local governments, that they may promote understanding and cooperation amongst all the residents of their area, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are experiencing the wilderness in their life's journey, that we may encourage and support them during this difficult time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, especially for those in our parish bulletin and our book of intentions, that they will find God's healing in body, mind, and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, in a special way this week, we remember the following. Kathleen LaBelle, Deacon Peter F. Benz, Enrica Deo, Kathy Mandel as well as the recently deceased, including Mark Montano, brother of Sue Cross. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Good and nourishing God, turn to us in love. Hear our prayers and gather them into your eternal heart through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Priestly people of God, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to our loving God. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the fall of his holy church. Sanctify these gifts, O God, and accepting the offering of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our loving God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And so, gracious God, we ask of you by the same Spirit to make holy these gifts we have brought to you this day, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy 
and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church in recognizing the sacrificial lamb by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and her faithful spouse, Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our patron, the Bishop Augustine, and Ignatius Loyola, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis of Rome, our Bishop Douglas, all ministers of the gospel everywhere, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you this day. In your compassion, O merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give God admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Sisters and brothers, let us pray now for the gift of God's promised bread. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, may the peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you always. With Let us share with each other some sign of Christ's peace.
This indeed is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just going to make two very quick announcements. 
Um, things are getting back to normal when announcements start, so <laughs> we're very ex excited about that. But for those of you that are at home, we would just like to let you know that, um, as you are aware, um, the governor and the Board of Education and all the school districts throughout the state, public and uh, private, have not yet um, made a de final decision on school and what's going to be happening in September. However, we are still going to do the school supply collection here at St. Augustine. So um, regardless if there is school or you know a stay at home, we'll find a way to get supplies home to students. And if it's in person, um, it'll uh, go the same way that it normally has been. So if you do have school supplies, um, you're welcome to drop them off in the vestibule of the church. Um, there is a cart rate when you walk in the doors. Um, you can do it on the weekend or if you are uncomfortable coming by the church um, and you need some help with that, you can certainly contact the parish office. And also, um, beginning August 10th, we're going to have a special faith formation program here at St. Augustine's called um, Compassion Camp. And we all know in our world today that we need more compassion. It's a wonderful program for students in grades 1 through 6. So if you are home and your child is home and you might have, be interested in participating, um, St. Mary's parishioners, I believe, are welcomed as well. We want to get as many children and families involved as possible. Um, just contact the Faith Formation Office or the Parish Office. And if you should have any questions, uh, feel free to see a member of the ministry team. So we're thinking of you, we're praying for you, um, and you're with us always here at St. Augustine's and also at St. Mary's. Thank you very much. Thank you to Father Lou for saying Mass, and Joe's here behind the camera, and uh, Dave Urban playing the guitar. So, And obviously, our wonderful um, readers. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you soon. Let us pray. Gracious God, wrap us with your constant protection so that those you renew with these heavenly gifts and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of, worthy of eternal redemption through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our loving God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to be God. God.